1954, the movie was released. Personally produced by Walt Disney through his production company, the film features Kirk Douglas, James Mason, Paul Lucas, and Peter Lorre, directed by Richard Flesher. Before starring in the movie, Kirk Douglas insisted on a script change, showcasing his commitment to his craft and dedication to delivering a stellar performance. This demand ultimately led to a more refined and compelling portrayal of his character, adding depth and nuance to the film. Kirk Douglas's insistence on script perfection highlights his professionalism and artistic integrity in bringing his character to life on the big screen. Adaptation and filming locations. The film was adapted from Jules Verne's 1870 novel and was shot in various locations in the Bahamas and Jamaica. Filming commenced in the spring of 1954 necessitating a technical crew of more than 400 individuals for intricate location sequences. The tropical settings of the Bahamas and Jamaica provided a perfect backdrop for the captivating underwater scenes and maritime adventures portrayed in the film. The crew worked tirelessly to bring Verne's classic tale to life, capturing the essence of the deep sea exploration and the mysterious world beneath the waves. The lush landscapes and vibrant marine life of the Caribbean added a sense of authenticity and wonder to the movie, enhancing the viewer's immersion into the fantastical journey of the characters on screen. Director Richard Flesher was surprised to be considered for the film. He was the son of Disney's biggest competitor, Max Flesher. He confirmed with Walt Disney, who knew his background, and hired him because he was the best man for the job with his father's approval. In 1954, Disney's first film, utilizing the Cinemascope process, emerged as a breakthrough. It marked a significant departure from conventional movie formats, stepping into the realm of anamorphic widescreen display. Disney Studios encountered a hurdle when Bausch, and Lom faced a shortage of lenses, compelling them to secure the solitary available Cinemascope lens from 20th Century Fox. This move inadvertently stretched the film's production timeline, but the end result was a testament to innovation and perseverance. The challenges faced during the making of this film underscore the dedication and resourcefulness of all involved. The interiors of the submarine, the Nautilus, were designed by Roland E. Hill Sr., who also designed Disneyland's Sleeping Beauty Castle. A model of the Nautilus was displayed at Walt Disney World's Epcot Center as an attraction called the Living Seas until remodeled. The Nautilus's design was heavily modified from the novel's plain description to appeal more to audiences, including a squeezed version by Harper Goff for Cinemascope filming. Until the late 1960s, sets representing the Nautilus interiors were used as an attraction at Disneyland, including the chart room, salon, and an observation window with an animated squid. Professor, Professor, Abortion, Professor, Abortion. The climactic squid battle was initially shot with a serene sunset and calm sea, making the gears operating the squid visible. Walt Disney suggested reshooting it during a fierce storm, which became a highlight of the film. Another version attributes this idea to screenwriter Earl Felton. Hey, Professor. Destroy everything. The production of the movie was so large that Disney used facilities at Universal and 20th Century Fox. Soundstage 3 and its tank were built at Disney Studios specifically for the film. The title implies a travel distance of 68,350 miles, almost two and a half times around the Earth. Stand by engines, prepare for diving. Aye, sir. Prepare for diving. During the filming of the movie, cast members carried herring to reward Esmeralda the seal. The director found it amusing when James Mason had to reach into his pocket 
making the cast smell like a fish market. Amidst the underwater treasure chest scene, a nurse shark approached. Despite the crew's efforts to shoo it away, their attempts failed, and the exciting interruption made its way into the final film. In the movie from 1954, there was a memorable scene involving a wooden skiff that was painted to resemble metal. To keep the skiff balanced, it was supposed to be weighted with sandbag. However, during filming, the crew forgot to replace the sandbags, leading to an unexpected moment. As Kurt Douglas rode the skiff, the lack of sandbags caused him to lose balance and fall backward an unplanned mishap that made it into the final cut of the film. This blunder added an element of realism and surprise to the scene, making it a noteworthy and amusing part of the movie. The unintended event contributed to the film's charm and authenticity, showcasing the spontaneous nature of filmmaking. And you will feel less inclined to barter such a privacy. We will discuss it at that time. The film was one of Disney's early works broadcast on TV in a two-hour slot, a rarity for its time. Previous movies had to be trimmed to fit one-hour slots or split into segments. The cast shared great camaraderie during a production, enhancing the on-screen chemistry however. Paul Lucas, due to his age and memory issues, kept to himself causing some awkward moments on set. Despite this, the cast managed to deliver a memorable performance that resonated with audiences. Quick, close the hatch! I'll give the commands on this boat, Mr. Lamb. Stand aside. Aye, sir. At 12 minutes in, a portrait of Abraham Lincoln is seen in the warship's officer's wardroom, a nod to the novel where the warship was named after Lincoln. Kurt Douglas demanded scenes with women and fight sequences to maintain his macho image leading to additions like the San Francisco street scene and fight scenes. This pattern continued in later films like The Vikings and The War Wagon. In 1954, the film featured actors who played cannibals and added humor by writing messages such as Edith Joe's and I Ate Joe on their foreheads. These messages, although not legible on screen, added a playful touch to the movie. Despite this comedic aspect, the film became a box office success, earning $8 million in North American distributor rentals and standing as the third highest grossing film of that year. The clever use of humor alongside the engaging narrative contributed to the film's popularity and financial success, solidifying its place in cinematic history. The film from 1954 was a technical masterpiece, transitioning Disney from animation to live-action movie settings. It showcased groundbreaking special effects and innovative underwater filming techniques that captivated audiences of the time. The attention to detail in creating the fantastical world beneath the sea was truly remarkable, setting a new standard for cinematic storytelling and visual effects in that era. The seamless integration of live action with animated sequences demonstrated Disney's expertise in storytelling across different mediums. The film's success paved the way for future live action productions by the studio, solidifying its reputation as a pioneer in the film industry. The legacy of the film continues to influence filmmakers and entertain audiences, showcasing the power of creativity and imagination in bringing stories to life on the big screen. In the 1954 movie, a captain, a professor, a harpooner, and a sailor embark on a perilous journey aboard a technologically advanced submarine called the Nautilus. Their adventure takes them through underwater wonders, encounters with fierce creatures, and battles with a mysterious captain named Nemo Dot. Set in the vast depths of the ocean, the film showcases the crew's struggle with Nemo's enigmatic nature and their own survival. With breathtaking underwater scenes and innovative special effects for its time, the movie received critical acclaim and won two Academy Awards for its art direction and special effect. Its enduring legacy has solidified it as a classic tale of exploration 
adventure, and human nature. Tear one another to pieces. A mere few feet beneath the waves. The casting process for the 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was meticulous. For the role of Captain Nemo, renowned actor James Mason was chosen for his commanding presence and depth of character. Kirk Douglas impressed the directors with his charisma and energy during auditions, landing the role of Ned Land. Paul Lucas was selected for Professor Aranax due to his intellectual aura and gravitas. Peter Laura's unique qualities secured him the part of Conseil, adding a touch of eccentricity to the ensemble. Chemistry tests revealed the perfect blend of personalities ensuring a cohesive cast. These pivotal moments shaped the dynamic and chemistry that would shine on screen in this iconic adaptation. The directorial vision behind the 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was to create a visually stunning and immersive adaptation of Jules Verne's classic novel. The director, Richard Fleischer, drew creative influences from the original source material, as well as incorporating his own cinematic flair. His approach involved a focus on practical effects and elaborate set designs to bring the underwater world of the Nautilus to life. Fleischer worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that the film captured the sense of adventure and mystery present in Verne's story. Through collaboration and attention to detail, the director was able to create a film that remains a classic in the genre of maritime adventure. <laughs> During the production of the 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the set design and locations were crucial aspects. The filmmakers created intricate sets to bring the underwater world to life. Filming took place in various locations to capture different scenes realistically. Logistical challenges included working with water tanks and ensuring the safety of the actors during underwater scenes. Innovative techniques and technologies were employed, such as using miniatures and models for underwater sequences. Special effects were used to simulate the giant squid attack adding excitement to the film. The production team also used advanced lighting techniques to enhance the underwater scenes, creating an otherworldly atmosphere. Overall, the production of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was a groundbreaking endeavor that pushed the boundaries of filmmaking at the time. It combined creative set design, innovative technologies, and logistical expertise to bring Jules Verne's classic story to the screen in a visually stunning way. The musical score and soundtrack of the 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea were carefully crafted to enhance the narrative and emotional tone of the film. Composers like Paul J. Smith and Burt Schefter worked on creating music that captured the sense of adventure and mystery present in the story. The use of orchestral music with dramatic themes and motifs helped to underscore the excitement and tension of the underwater scene. Musicians involved in the production of the soundtrack were skilled in translating the movie's themes into music that could evoke the deep sea atmosphere and the spirit of exploration. Through the use of instruments like strings, brass, and percussion, the soundtrack was able to create a sense of grandeur and wonder that matched the movie's visual spectacle. The collaboration between composers, musicians, and filmmakers resulted in a soundtrack that perfectly complemented the story of Captain Nemo and his submarine adventures. The music added depth and emotion to key moments in the film, enhancing the overall viewing experience for audiences of all ages. In the iconic scenes of the 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, one standout moment is when the Nautilus, the submarine captained by Nemo, is first revealed. The direction of this scene expertly builds suspense as the submarine emerges from the depths of the ocean, accompanied by a grand musical score that enhances the awe 
and mystery of this technological marvel. The cinematography captures the sheer scale of the Nautilus against the vast expanse of the ocean, creating a visually stunning spectacle that captivates the audience. Another impactful scene is the underwater exploration sequence, where the characters encounter the mesmerizing sea creatures and underwater landscapes. The performance of the actors convincingly conveys a sense of wonder and discovery, immersing the audience in the fantastical world beneath the wave. The cinematography in this scene is particularly striking, with innovative camera techniques capturing the beauty and danger of the deep sea environment. Filmmakers and actors have commented on the enduring impact of these iconic scenes highlighting the visionary direction that brought Jules Verne's classic novel to life on the screen. Through meticulous attention to detail and performance in cinematography, the movie succeeds in transporting viewers to a realm of adventure and imagination that continues to resonate with audiences to this day. Thank you. I'll be brief, Professor. I understand that your destination is the Orient. The 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea had a significant cultural and social impact. Audiences were captivated by its underwater adventures and impressive special effects that brought the novel to life. The film influenced pop culture by sparking interest in science fiction and ocean exploration. It also contributed to discussions on themes such as environmental conservation and technological progress. Overall, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea resonated with viewers shaping their perceptions of the sea and sparking imaginations about the mysteries of the deep. Its legacy continues to inspire storytellers and audiences to this day. Moving on to the critical reception and accolades of the 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, let's delve into how the film fared with critics and audiences as well as any awards it garnered. The film received generally positive reviews from critics, with many praising its visual effects and cinematic spectacle. Audience reactions were also favorable, particularly towards the performances of the cast and the imaginative portrayal of underwater scenes. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was nominated for three Academy Awards and won two, including Best Art Direction, and best special effects. These accolades signify recognition for the hard work and creative talent of the production team, actors, and crew involved in bringing the story to life on screen. E. Receiving awards and nominations can boost the careers of those involved in the film, opening up new opportunities and increasing their standing in the industry. It showcases their skills and dedication, leading to more projects and increased respect within the filmmaking community. Was much to occupy me, so I left my apprentice to deal with During the filming of the 1954 movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, there was a memorable moment when Kirk Douglas insisted on performing his own stunts, much to the amazement of the cast and crew. His dedication to authenticity brought an extra level of excitement to the set. Additionally, the elaborate set design for the Nautilus submarine was a marvel to behold with intricate details and innovative technology for its time. This attention to detail truly brought Jules Verne's underwater world to life on the big screen. Released in 1954, the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea holds a significant place in film history. Known for its groundbreaking special effects and captivating storytelling, the film set a new standard for underwater adventure movie. Its influence on future filmmaking can be seen in the use of advanced special effects and imaginative storytelling techniques in subsequent films. The success of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea inspired a wave of underwater and science fiction movies that sought to replicate its blend of wonder and excitement. Its legacy endures as a classic of the adventure genre and a testament to the power of storytelling in cinema. Have you ever been inspired by the thrilling adventures of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Share your personal stories and how this classic 1954 movie influenced your love for cinema. Engage with us through likes, shares, and subscriptions for more cinematic explorations.